Karen, thanks so much for taking the time today. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here with you, Billy. All right, so we are here to talk about Hope Lives, which is your new film, and there's a lot to unpack here. It's an incredible movie, and it's a film that deals with some very important topics, bullying being one of them, Um, but what was it for you? You've done so many amazing films and projects that attracted you to this film, that made you want to be a part of it. It was just uh, Anthony Hackett, the writer, his heart for people, his heart for the youth and really wanting to um, stand with them, stand up for them um, in the physical, not just uh, in words. You know, sometimes we voice, oh, we care, we want to help, but we don't put action to it. He wrote a story and um, stepped up and stepped out to do something about it. And yeah. just his heart for it, as well as my heart for anybody who is being uh, bullied or, you know, painted with a negative brush or, you know, just hurt in any kind of way. And I've got a soft spot for kids and teens. And so. Yeah. Well, Even I was going to ask you that. The project. Well, I wanted I to ask you that, what you just said about kids, because you have been in a number of films that have dealt with young people and the issues that young people face, particularly teenagers, older adults. This does seem like something that um, is intentional for you, that these are roles that you intentionally take. Would that be an accurate claim? Absolutely accurate. Um, many times... Uh, the voices of our kids are, for many reasons, silenced. And if I can do anything to make them see and really know that they are seen, that is a part of, I believe, my calling here, my purpose on this earth. Uh, My family, we've been a foster family for many, many years. We're not doing it right now, but we did it for a long, long, long time. And we even attempted a few foster adopt situations that didn't work out. But um, yeah, you know, I've seen uh, kids lived with them, loved on them through the ups and downs. And they get painted with dark brushes, especially the older kids. But we found some incredible, incredible children um, through fostering. And so I know personally that um, a lot of what we're told about the kids, the negative stuff, it is not true. And they just want to be loved uh, and to be able to trust and to be able to hope like Uh, um, they deserve to be able to. Absolutely. I didn't know that about you, the fostering. I mean, that is, that's incredible. What, what did it teach you about yourself, right? You talked there about, because it's such an amazing thing, you know, getting involved in the foster care system, adoption, these are incredible things. What did you learn maybe about yourself or even things you maybe thought that proved to be inaccurate as you were going through that process of helping those children? Well, the inaccuracies again, um, that you can't help the older kids, not true. Um, I learned that there were some things inside of me because of the way I grew up um, in my home. There was a lot of love, but there was also alcoholism and drug abuse. So um, I would love to have been able to draw or paint stories a little differently than they happen. But now that I'm an adult, I'm grateful that they did because they're part of making me the person I am now. But So I know firsthand a lot of what a lot of these kids are uh, experiencing and why they were removed from their homes in the first place. And uh, so I can give them some of the things that I didn't get Yeah, growing up. And yeah. That's amazing. We can can relate. We can relate. And that's... 
being able to take that experience into it. And then, you know, as an artist, as a phenomenal actress, being able to then bring those experiences into these films that you're doing. And here we're talking about hope. I mean, the title of the film is hope lives, right? And, you know, it's such a, it's such a true statement that hope lives. Now you play the character, Miss Ryan's. What can you tell us about your character? (laughs) <laughs> she's an interesting character. She's a believer, but she's still what's straddling the fence in the world. And um, I love the role because it is so real. You know, many times in faith-based uh, projects, they show you one way or the other. She's dabbling a little bit in the other world, too, even though she's given her life to Christ. And it's real. You know, yeah. it's you, you, you go and you grow daily. And um, because the, as you know, the story, I don't want to give too much of it away. Um, she suffered great loss and um, she's dealing with it the way she is, but also her son has suffered great loss. And so dealing with the son and the loss of a grandchild, um, the, the levels of loss. And then hope weaving in and through the, the, the story or being able to see beyond the dark clouds, the pain um, is what she's navigating through. And that also was intriguing for this um, opportunity to play this character. This yeah, well, you... You brought up a number of things there that I think are interesting. You know, there are times that the way that things are presented in certain films, it's, you know, especially in the faith world, it's very black or white. You know, you've been in a lot of movies where you're dealing with real life issues, right? This is another film where these are real life issues, real life people. Why is that important to you as a performer, as an actress, to take on those roles that show the real life things that we're going through? It is my ministry. It is important that people who are out on the fringes, who are feeling like they are out in another zone and that there's something absolutely wrong with them, that they can't get their lives together. They need to see people inside the walls um, struggling because we do. We can um, dress up and leave a beautiful home, but when we close that door, no one really knows what we're closing that door on. We step out with our uh, ladies with the Jimmy Choo shoes on, step into a nice car, and people are only seeing what we allow them to see. But everybody on this planet has issues and choices that they have to make every day, moment to moment. So when people who are on the outer rim, uh, seemingly, or feeling like it, when they see themselves, they see their struggles, and then they see that individual, that person, that group of people still in the midst of everything, hopeful, then there we go. Yeah. We don't always reach people by talking at them or talking over them, right? You know, I think- We turn them off. We turn them off. I will too. I'll change the channel. I'm like, oh no. (laughs) Exactly. And, And you have taken those roles that I think- consistently, I don't think I know, they consistently show that. And with Mm -hmm. Hope Lives, you know, this is another one of those films where that's happening and people can watch it on Pure Flix and stream it and see this amazing movie. Now, I want to ask about your your history and the movies you've made in a broader sense, because obviously people, you really burst on the scene. You had been a longtime performer, um, but War Room, you know, going through that film and seeing how big it was and then how amazing your performance was there. When you look when you look at not just that film, but the trajectory of your career overall, what is the biggest thing that has surprised you? How has God surprised you along the way? that he will use you in a wonderful, mighty way at any age and any stage. I was 57 when I did War Room. And then uh, the opportunity to play an older woman 
you know, you're out in Hollywood, you're trying to keep it together, trying to, you know, young, 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 because young, 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 young gets cast. Young, 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 young sells. But he was, when he gave me the opportunity to play Miss Clara, this older woman, he was, it was just like a love letter to me from the father saying, girl, I've got you. Don't you worry. Our stuff is not this flesh earthly stuff. What I have for you is not what I have for Carol or Debbie or Don or Paul. It's between me and you, baby girl. And I've got your back. I've got your sides. I've got all of you. Watch what your daddy does. Mm. Yeah. That must have been that must have been so powerful for you. Not as I mean, yes, as an actress, but as a human being connecting with God and seeing that because so often, and I don't know, I can't speak for you, but in life. You know, we've got blinders on. We can't see beyond what we want or what we think we should have, or we see things a certain way. And then God comes in and just does something so crazy. You're like, I never could have even written that in a script myself. And yet here it is. And would you describe that, that movie in that moment as being one of those things for you? Oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And, uh, I thought about the times when I'd get frustrated when um, some people that I did uh, theater or some other things with creatively, they were getting these big breaks. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, frustrating because, you know, God, you've equipped me. I'm classically trained. I know that this is my gift that you've given me to minister with. And you're not allowing me to minister. But had I done some of the other projects it may have taken me out of play for this. And I had a lot to learn and still a lot of uh, refining and molding and all of those things that I needed to go through. He needed to do with me so that I could play Miss Clara. And then after I played Miss Clara, um, everybody only wanted me to play older women. And again, <laughs> classically trained. I thank God he's gifted me so I can I can do a lot. Uh, you know, creatively. And so out of that, I was like, okay, God, so where do I go from here? And then he sent me a little story and he gave me the ability to write out this script, this discarded things. And I had to trust him. I had to trust him like never before. And then I produced the movie and it did well. It's still rolling quite well. And so now not only am I an actress, but I'm writing and producing. That's amazing. So it's a whole other open door on something that maybe you wouldn't have thought about. Never would have thought about. Never. But That's see, how God works. He, yeah, he saw me bigger than I ever saw myself. You know, we've talked a lot here about you know your your career and obviously the current you know the current projects. What for you at the end of the day, and I, I ask everybody this, and I may have asked you this last time we talked, but I'm going to ask you again because I think it's such an important question to center us and get us thinking. Mm -hmm. What is your legacy? Like at the end of the day, when all is said and done, you look back at your career years from now, what do you want that legacy to have been? That I have left hope and inspiration, encouragement. Um using the gifts that God has given me and that it is clear, clear that it was God. Mm, that's good. And that's, and that's a very simple but difficult legacy for a lot of people. We tend to make it about ourselves, right? What do we want to be remembered for? And what you just said is a point back toward God, right? That the work that you do provides that hope and that point back toward the Lord. And I so appreciate that. Karen, as always, it was amazing talking to you. The film is Hope Lives. It's streaming on Pure Flix. Thanks again for your time today. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. And I look forward to the next time. Continue blessings.